Hey guys, it's BSRC here for RC Nightmare. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your brushed RC motor. For this rebuild, you're going to want some bearing oil and some com oil. If you can't find com oil, it's not absolutely necessary for a rebuild, but at least find some kind of bearing oil. And I'm also using a very thin strip of 600 grit sandpaper here. I just cut it about a quarter inch thick, a few inches long. Make sure you've got a real fine grit, you want 600 or higher for this. I'll show you what we're going to use that for in a little bit. Then you'll just need a couple small tools, a Phillips screwdriver and a small flathead. So to start, we're going to pull the brushes off the motor. Now it's key that while we're working on this, we keep an eye on orientation of parts. And so we're, as we're pulling the brushes out, we want to make sure we know which way they went in and what side they're on for both sides. So for this guy, I know that the wire coming out of it, the braided wire, is on the top. So I'm going to make sure that when I put these brushes back in that the braided wire is on the top side. Now if you're not sure and you don't want to forget, you can always use something like a Sharpie to mark everything before you take it apart so you know it's all going together the same way. Now I'm not going to use a Sharpie just yet, but what I am going to do is mark the timing. So all brushed motors have timing and the end bell here, this, is the whole, this whole piece here is called the end bell, can pivot and as you pivot it you adjust the timing, either advance or retard the timing. I have the timing at neutral right now which is where I like it for this setup. So I'm going to make a small mark right here to let me know where the timing was before I took it apart. So to make that mark, I'm just going to take a small flathead screwdriver and just etch into the label a little bit. Now some motors might have this marked out for you. They'll show you the timing marks on here. This one ha doesn't happen to have it. So I'm just putting a small mark on there and a small mark on that tab so I know it's this side. Okay, now we have our timing marked out and we note the direction of the brushes. We're going to remove the brush springs. There's two brush springs, one for each here and here. To remove them, simply push back the top part of the spring and pop it out of its holder, just like that. Keep an eye on the springs so you don't lose them. Do it again on the other side, pop it out, and remove the spring. There's no orientation on the spring, so don't worry about which one goes where. Now if you've had this motor for many years and your springs are worn out, you might want to replace them. These springs are relatively brand new, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, now we're going to back the brushes out. So we grab the braided wire and just carefully pull them out of the cage. I got one out there. Do the same thing on the other side. Got my other brush out. Now we're going to take a quick look at the brushes. Now these are pretty new. I don't have a whole lot of scoring on them, but if yours are pitted or the edges are cracked or damaged in any way, you, you are going to want to replace them. Other than that, it's not always necessary to replace your brushes. You're only looking for damage. If they are got a nice fine wear mark on them, you know you're okay. And these both look real good and these are pretty new, so I know that there should be no reason to replace them unless a rock or some debris got in there and damaged it. So I got my brushes off. Now I'm going to remove the end bell. There's just two Phillips screws holding this on. One here and one here. We're going to back those out. Again, make sure you marked your timing before you do this. Back the other one out. And now the end bell is free. So very carefully Pull the end bell off. Okay, now I have this off. Your motor may or may not have a small shim up on the upper bearing here. Um, mine does have one. It's actually still in the shaft. Make sure that you look for these, and if you do have them, don't lose them. There's my little spacer. Set that aside. Now we can back the armature out of the motor. Now I want to be careful as we're doing this. You don't want to scrape it up. Um, before you do that, I'm sorry, we do have to remove the plate here, the lock plate. You see there's a metal plate right here and this is what the end bell bolts to. Now this guy is locked in place right now. There's small tabs on the outside of the motor that hold it in. If you see, there's small recesses around the ring that line up with those tabs. So I'm going to rotate this using a small tool. You can see I'm just rotating the ring until it lines up with the tabs. And there we go, that's lined up. 
Now we can just pop her out of here. The magnet's going to fight me a little bit, but there I got her. And set that aside. Now the armature is free. So push from the front. Don't pull on your, this is the comm right here. That's what the brushes run on. Don't pull on that. Push from the front. And if you can, grab the armature there. Again, the magnets will fight you a little bit. Okay, I have the armature free. In the can, I do have two spacers inside the bearing there. I'm just going to knock them loose. I've got two in front, one in back. So I remember that for next time when I'm, putting, when I'm reassembling. Now you want to check the can for debris, cracked magnets. Check the magnets on the outside and make sure they're nice and smooth and there's no cracks or pieces missing. Mine looks real good. They're still in place, so I can set that aside for now. And we're going to focus our attention on the armature. Look for any damage to the windings, the wire. Look around for any debris, something that might have gotten stuck to it. This one looks real clean, so I know that the body of the armature is okay. Now we're going to look at the comm, and this is the most important part of your motor. The brushes run on the comm, and that's what transfers the electricity from your ESC to the motor to cause it to spin. Because the brushes are spinning on that comm at all times, they're wearing down on it. Um, the brushes wear down, but so does the comm, so we want to make sure that these, the comm is real clean. You can see a little bit of scoring on it. That's not out of the ordinary. We still have a nice shiny copper uh, look to it, and that's what we want. A little bit of dark scoring is okay. If you have a lot of scoring, it's real black, pitted. Um, if you look between the com plates here and the groove, make sure that's nice and even all the way across. If you see pieces missing or junk stuck in there, you want to clean that out. Ours is fairly clean. I'm going to demonstrate to you how to polish the com. Now, there's many different ways to do this. Back in the day, um, many people used com lays to actually perfectly lay the com, and that's a kind of extravagant tool you can buy if you use around 50 to a few hundred dollars. If you want a com lathe, if you're racing professionally, it might be a good investment for you. For us, I'm just going to use a simple drill method. Now, some hobby stores may carry uh, com sticks. These are little files, almost, that you can use to polish the com up. Those work well. You, um, you can use them. I like to do this method of chucking up in the drill to polish it up. I know my com isn't damaged or out of round, so all I'm doing is put a nice fine finish on it again. So to do that, what we're going to start with is a Sharpie. And I'm using the Sharpie to mark the com. The reason I'm doing this is because as I'm polishing, I want to make sure that I did remove all the surface evenly across the com. So we use the Sharpie to show us what I, what's I've removed already and what still needs to be polished. So I'm just marking the com all the way around and that will give me a reference point. Okay, now we're going to take our drill. I'm just going to chuck it up in, into the drill so I can spin it. Okay, now you want to make sure while you're doing this it is beneficial to spin the armature in the correct direction that it's going to be going in the truck most of the time. In this case, as I'm looking from the front of my armature, I know it's got to spin clockwise. I can see right now it's spinning counterclockwise, so I'm going to reverse that. That's the direction I want. Now we take our thin strip of sandpaper, again this is 600 grit, and we're going to wrap it around the comm and hold it just like that. And Now as I spin the drill, this small bit of sandpaper is going to polish the comm up for us. Now you're not going to want to, you're not going to, want to pull too hard on this, just enough pressure to polish it. So let me give you guys a closer look. You can see I got the strip just on the comm. You want to be careful not to damage this part of the comm where the wires attach, just enough to cover the comm itself. We're going to spin this up. And as I'm spinning, I'm just moving it back and forth a little bit to give it a little pressure and make sure that I'm cleaning it up evenly. Go a little bit longer. You can see that I've removed all of my Sharpie marks, so I know that I got it nice and even. If I look all the way around, it's nice and shiny, polished copper all the way around. It looks real good. Okay, now that I know I have my comm polished up properly, I can take it out of the drill. And 
again, taking a closer look, you can see that it's polished all the way around. Nice and shiny. Looks good. The next step, I want to look at the seams between the com plates. Again, we want to make sure that's nice and clean. I'm just going to inspect it with a screwdriver. Make sure there's no debris in there. I'm not trying to etch it. I'm just feeling it out here to make sure that there's nothing in there. And my ours are nice and clean and even, so I know that's all set. So that's how I polish the comm. Now again, you can do that with a comm lathe, and the comm lathe will make sure that the commutator is perfectly round. If you race real hard, it might be oval shaped a little bit, so that's what the comm tool gives you. I know that ours is good, so a little polish is all it needed to refreshen it up. All right, now we can reassemble our motor. I'm going to take the can again, and before I put the armature in, I'm just going to give it a little drop of bearing oil. So take your bearing oil, little drop on the front and rear of the bearing, just like so, small drop. Now remember I have two washers that go in front, so I put those on the shaft, like so, and very carefully let the shaft sink back in. Okay, so I've got my armature back in my can. Now we can take our lock plate, put that back on, line it up with the grooves, drop it in, and then spin it around to lock it in place. And now in this case, these two screw holes will line up with the mark I made earlier for my timing. So I'm going to spin that until it lines up with my mark as close as possible. That's good there. And we take our rear spacer, put it on the back. Now we can put our end bell on. And again, before I put it on, quick drop of oil on the inside of the bearing and on the outside. And I'm going to also apply a couple drops of calm oil. It's easier to get to right now. All right, we got our calm oil on. I can drop this guy back in. Again, line it up with our mark. There we go, and I have a small tick mark lined up with the mark I made earlier. Now we can put our screws back in. Now as you're putting these in, you may need to line it up with that plate. It might not be perfectly lined up, so you might have to play with it a little bit. A little trick that I like to use, if you got a real narrow handle tool like this, a narrow tip, you can stick it in the hole and wiggle it around to help line up that plate. So put the screws in. Tighten her down. Not all the way tight just yet. We're going to leave them loose. The other guy. Okay, and before I tighten these up, I'm going to double check my timing. It might have shifted as you move that plate around. Make sure your mark's lined up. I can see that mine is. So now I can tighten these down all the way. Get them a little little snug. Again, you don't have to go too tight. Perfect, just like that. Okay, now it's time to put the brushes back in. So take our brush, and now we want to match the orientation from before. Like I said, I see that the ribbon cable is on the top side of the brush, so I want to make sure that that's facing up as I put it in. As it is there, that's good. Push it in, bend that over. Now we can do the other side. Again, I'm making sure my ribbon cable is on the top side, and it is. Push that in. Now we can put our springs on. And these are fairly straightforward. Take this small end that's got the little arm on it, put that in first against the brush, then you can just bend this arm all the way around and lock it in place on that tab. I'll do the other side for you a little bit closer. Again, take the small arm side, that goes on the brush, so stick it on the post, push that under the brush. Now we take the other arm and bring it all the way around and lock it in place, just like that. And that's it. We got our motor back together, nice and lubed. Spin it over a few times, get the calm oil worked into it. 
and that's it. Now anytime you rebuild a motor, you want to make sure that you do a break-in. A uh, break-in can be a wet or dry method. If you look at our previous video, I did show you how to do both those methods. Um, again, it just involves submersing it in water, or you can keep it out of water and run it at a low speed. Just make sure you get it a, give it a nice low voltage break-in before you run it hard in your rig. Now you'll notice we didn't replace our brushes. Again, if you need to replace your brushes, make sure you get the right kinds. There's a lot of different brush cuts that you can buy. And again, unless you're racing professionally, don't worry too much about the cut. Just get a plain old replacement brush for your motor and make sure that you get the right style. There's a lay down or stand up brushes. So you want to make sure you look at see if your brush lays down the long way or stands up the tall way before you buy. If you're unsure, just bring the motor you're building in with you to the hobby shop and they'll set you up with the right brushes. And that's how to rebuild a brush motor, guys. Again, if you have any questions, post below or you can post up at RC Nightmare Forums. We'll get all your questions answered there. We'll talk to you guys soon.